Hello again, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of Tech Times Daily. I'll be your host for today, Christian Tejares, and with me is my co-host, Christopher the non the king of the ring of conversations, Joe Bell Banter. He's been living La Vida Loca since the 80s, the great Christopher Short. Hi, Chris. What's up, man? How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Thanks for once dating again, me. Once again, it's hell here. <laughs> like, we just had a fire, I think, was it yesterday? In an airport? Parking lot? Okay, yes. Why? I seen it in two different posts and I couldn't understand whoever wrote it. It was really difficult to understand. I don't know, was it the sun on hot on dry grass or was it some person? I think they're thinking about because 19 cars have been totaled, right? Yeah. Burned to a crisp. Like they, they said it was because dry grass actually heated up. Like it, it may be a wildfire. It's a rarity here in the Philippines. Like I was like thinking rare... more batteries actually exploding because of the heat. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, or somebody, you know, had like their their tank was empty. You know how like fumes, like an empty tank is more dangerous than a full tank. Yeah. I don't uh, know. It was weird. It's such a strange thing to see in the news. I guess no one got hurt because of it. But, but then again, the cars. Yeah, think of 19, the billionaires. <laughs> 19 cars. Jesus. Well, I think I think I think people with money probably don't park over there. Yeah. You know. I figured they'd be long gone by then. Yeah, this is probably I I, I would imagine it's a bunch of company cars. Well, I don't even know about company cars really. Because you imagine somebody from the company would drop you off at the airport. Yeah, but still dry grass burning just because of heat. How hot is it in this country now? <laughs> it's so hot. It's it's 90, almost 100 degrees every day. Yeah. yeah well, hopefully our audience is actually staying cool right now. Uh, and for those that haven't subscribed, subscribed to the channel yet, uh, please subscribe. We, before we start, we encourage comments. And... With that being said, our topic for today comes to us from our Tech Times writer, Quincy John, uh, entitled TikTok Vows Legal Battle Against Potential U.S. Ban. Popular social media platform TikTok intends to fight any ban or for sale of its U.S. businesses in court after the House of Representatives passed legislation over the weekend. Biden administration officials and many Republicans and Democratic politicians Fear TikTok poses national security dangers because China may force the business to disclose the data of its 170 million U.S. users. TikTok's head of public policy for the Americas, Michael Beckerman, wrote to staff that the TikTok ban measure was illegal and that the company would sue. Beckerman said the law violated the First Amendment, which pro pro protects free expression and that TikTok would defend its stance in court to preserve its 170 million American users' First Amendment rights. Now, Chris, do you think it's kind of weird that there's a different Bill of Rights that's being set in their China product versus the U.S., where the First Amendment is not actually present in China, where they actually do the opposite of this? Well, yeah, uh... I think I think this is necessary. And I know a lot of TikTok I have a friend that actually I guess he's making a living on TikTok now. Um uh I seen he posted on social media yesterday, I think it was. He was not happy. He's like, uh, you know, this this is this is an infringement on our rights. Um he was calling for his followers to like not vote for politicians that are pro TikTok ban. Um, and I get his point of view if if he makes money, but I also think that that motivation can uh like distort yeah. your view, right? Like this is it it this is serious and it drives me absolutely crazy, Christian, that people Americans more more specifically um don't take the chinese threat seriously All right china is not they're not nice and when i say china i don't mean the chinese people i mean the government they're not nice they don't like western 
culture. They don't like that they're not the world power. And they want to be this thing. And they will do these psyops and all that stuff, steal our data, um, use it against us. They most certainly absolutely will do this. And I just wish more people would take it seriously. Yeah, there, there should have been actual... If you are an influencer on TikTok, would you weaponize your followers to actually do political... Uh, uh, that's what people do nowadays, I guess. It. It's kind of, kind of par for the course these days. If you have any type of influence, then you use that influence really to kind of get what you want, I guess. Like in the case of a ban, like I think Kyrgyzstan actually handled it best. Like they pretty much specified it's because of child endangerment, right? Right. Like we discussed, I think, a couple of times here, and especially yesterday, that the users of social media becoming more younger during the, the, the past months now or years. Uh, it's moving to the point that there is an overt sexualization of kids nowadays and for the sake of social media clout. And TikTok is one of the platforms that's actually easy for them to actually do this. Right. Like there are also the issues regarding the parents not actually monitoring their kids when using TikTok. Or even if they are monitoring it, they're actually allowing it. Yeah, but participating at some in some cases. Participating in some in some cases. And I can understand the the need for at least a reg regulating body for this one. Mm. But in terms of a complete ban, uh, you're gonna have well, to do the same for the net for the other social media platforms. Well, I, I think there's a pretty good handle on, well, maybe not really that good, but there's definitely an attempt on most social media platforms to limit what they can do with your data. Uh. The problem with TikTok is China has pretty much unfettered access, I think, to most of it. And, yeah, you know. And, but isn't the majority of technology that's coming into the U.S. are coming from China? Chinese factories, Chinese manufacturers. Like, if you think about it, even those protesting China are using signs that are made in China. <laughs> so, Right. Well, you know, like, are you familiar? Are you familiar with the Chinese money trap? You know about this thing? I've heard about it. Where they for, for, can you explain for our Tech Times viewers? <laughs> yeah, so and you you can you can search this too. It's it's a there's a lot of information about it actually online. Um, where China will loan a country. They're doing they did it all through Southeast Asia, uh, all through South America, uh, the South African Africa. continent. Yeah, um, and they basically loan countries shitload of money um yeah. and then when that country inevitably defaults china moves in on the territory they say well you didn't pay so now we we're going to do this to recoup we're going to we're going to have access to your uh to your waters to your to your ports and things and yeah so they're basically they're like loan sharks, right? They're like global loan sharks. They give you it's more money same. than you can pay back, and then they punish you in a way that benefits them as far as territories and global infrastructure. And they're doing it all over the world. Yeah, they they did the same thing with Akon City and Senegal, right? Oh, really? Yeah, like Akon got funding from China for his project, and that hasn't actually pushed through. Right. And he's been being chased by a bunch of people because of money issues and funding like i, I guess they, they usually lend money to countries for their development but in exchange they get influences from that country right right well i mean they yeah they, they set up businesses you start have you start seeing a lot of chinese owned businesses that that you know sometimes push out locally you know these mom and pops places or these these uh local brands, you know, because of the the financial capital yeah. power that they have. Uh, yeah, and that's in terms of financial. But this one, I think, for TikTok, moving into the U.S. space, this is, I think, is more of a cultural thing. 
like they already invaded through the use of that app. I think the major concern of the government is the data being used. Like, can't that data just be stored in their local uh, a local server there in the U.S.? Well, I think they they are right now for the most part. Um, but Where? I think that's also why they they want uh, they want TikTok to they want China to divest from TikTok, right? So they have zero um, influence. So they want TikTok to be sold to to a U.S. entity, right? Uh, yeah, or just a divestment from brand. China. I think that I guess that could work. Maybe. But I mean, China's China's. I mean, this honestly, I think TikTok is the modern day um, Trojan horse. Yeah, I don't get the part where the there's an infringement of the First Amendment. Since the parent company that's actually promoting is in their home country, don't they don't even have it? That's well, a bit that's, hypocritical if you think about it. Well, it's one of those things where they they love our laws when they can restrict us by our own laws. You know what I'm saying? Like, or they can take advantage. Um, they say, "Oh, we can do that there because your law says we can." When in, like you said, in their country, I'll be damned if you say anything. There's no freedom of speech. Yeah. For me as a consumer, that doesn't concern me that much because there are alternatives to TikTok right now that are not gonna be scrutinized for having ties with China. But then again, playing right. the devil's advocate, is these type of thing any, any different? Like, does Facebook have a headquarters there in China also? Well, bike dance is Chinese, right? Right. So yeah, that's kind of the issue, I think. And I think uh Certain phones are being monitored regarding it, like Huawei. And that, yeah, it's another, I mean, it's another suspect. Yeah, and you know that's a, that's a good thing that you brought up because, um, again, I don't want to turn political, but this is just a matter of fact. Um, when Donald Trump said uh, that, you know, they're not going to allow Huawei to to do the five G in the U.S. Um, yeah. people could people looked at it as racist. Like, oh, he doesn't like the Chinese. He doesn't want, you know, them, you know, operating or whatever. You know, he's xenophobic or whatever the case may be. But it's it's that exact reason that we're seeing now, where China is, does, and pro will always pose a national security threat to the United States of America. Like that's just a matter of fact. I mean, we have spy balloons floating over the country that Biden doesn't shoot down until it goes all the way across, all the way across. Uh, yeah. China buys up land around military bases. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that there's some type of uh, operational type espionage, you know. Uh, the dude that, uh, what's his name? Um, the senator that was sleeping with what turned out to be a Chinese spy, Fang Fang or whatever her name was. And, and that, that's not being racist. I think her name, I think her real name actually was like Fang Fang. It's her name alone sounds incredibly racist, but it's not. That's her real life. It's not even, I guess, about racism because even Southeast Asian countries, Asian countries don't have that much. Don't view the China's assertiveness over the global stage as a positive at this point, like, they are pretty doubtful, even within the ASEAN nations. So right. uh, I don't think it's a matter of racism. Mostly it's a matter oh, of absolutely security. Not. Right? Uh, so, yeah, it, it's all about security. I mean, look what they do here. You know, they bully. There they are bully, regarding... They're bullies. They, they bully Japan. Uh, they bully the Philippines. They bully every little country that's around them. Um, you know, they, they can't bully the United States. So instead they go in the back door with things like TikTok and Huawei and the, the purchase of land by non-U.S. citizens in America to me is bananas. Yeah. Do you think a complete ban is actually too much? Like, could there just be certain aspects of TikTok that the government can actually seize control over rather than just completely halting service for everyone? 
Like what? Like at least make several stipulations regarding how they operate. Like I said, the servers could just be based in the U.S. Since China doesn't ha does have a separate content for TikTok, like it, it, yeah. it the the writing is already there. Like chi China's Chinese content on TikTok, it's not the same as be what's being shown in the Western front. So why even have the same servers? Yeah, I mean, and and that that just goes to the point of you know how China uses TikTok, right? Like they, it pumps an algorithm to the Western cultures where it's, um, you know, whatever stupid fucking trends and dancing and, you know, like whatever. Um, and then in China, you get a lot of STEM. Yeah. You get a lot of educational stuff. And the majority of those that do actually benefit from the traffic from TikTok, from the users, the content creators, most of them are going to be coming from the United States anyway. Those right. are that will be benefiting from advertising. I doubt people in China will be looking at advertising from the U.S. based on the TikTok platform. So if they could just limit it just to stay in the U.S., why not? Right. If I am a businessman and if there's something like this regarding my product and the government actually asked me regarding this stipulation, that, hey, can you just base your servers here in the U.S. since the majority of the benefits are actually just coming from the U.S., I would mm -hmm. actually accept it rather than lose complete revenue. Right. Right. Yeah. Could there not have been any compromise regarding that instead of just a complete ban? Um, I don't think you can take their word for it at this point. Which right, one? Like, the, the governments or? No, the Chinese. Uh, TikTok. Or ByteDance. Right. Like, um, I just don't think they're. I just don't think that they are. Um, it's it's kind of like it's like let's just you know maybe it is a little extreme, but um, it's better than not doing enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you think about it in a bigger picture, I think China built a very good Trojan horse, right? When it comes to TikTok. I mean, it is. It is. And, you know, the the worst thing about the whole thing is that now the American public in. loves the Trojan horse. Like, don't get rid of it. Like, we already know that this is not good on a geopolitical front. And you yeah, that's still why I mentioned argue. Kyrgyzstan stands on it. Like, they, they did specify this is for the protection of the children and why we did this. Right. They're more on the front of the content rather than the country that's actually yeah. involved yeah. in this. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's that, that also goes to show the, the issue with the United States, right? Um, the culture right now of the U.S. is if you don't like something and it's not from a particular group, yeah, and then everyone's like, "You're right. That's terrible. You're racist." Like we all we know now that COVID came from China. We know this, but you, if had you said that three years ago, you're racist. Uh, yeah, we you know, did mention you did mention your friend that's actually using TikTok to make money mm -hmm. now, and with the upcoming elections, do you think there would be a candidate that would embrace social media at this point that would actually retain voters? Or would they lose it? Uh, because we, we haven't heard either party stance regarding this. They are in unison regarding the ban for this, but the political candidates involved haven't said a peep regarding regarding any of the situation. You mean the presidential? TikTok. Presidential candidates. Uh, um, Would it hurt their, their campaign if they suddenly come out and have an opinion regarding this? I think they're afraid of alienating either side. Like that's a very political move, right? Like the young the young people love TikTok. The old people say the shit's dangerous. I guess that officially I'm an old person now. Uh, so they they don't they don't commit either way because they don't want to. They don't want to dissuade young people. 
if they say TikTok is the devil and they don't want to dissuade, you know, the older generation by saying TikTok's fine. Because we all know it's not fine. Yeah, but I the younger they generation. Would be I figured they would be concerned regarding this because whoever wins will actually experience the fallout from this. Well, they're definitely concerned. They have to be. You have to be. As as president, national security and um, what's it called? International policy. It's like top of the list for your responsibilities. Like the Senate and the Congress, they handle all the shit. Like in, in-house, the executive branch should be taking care of international policy and all this stuff. And this this bridges, this, this straddles the fence of both a domestic, a national security risk and also an international um, policy type thing. Like, there must be something to this if it's actually bringing together Republicans and Democrats to actually agree on something. Yeah. Right? I think that this is the the most interesting part for me is actually two parties actually agreeing for once. Right. And it's about what? an app. <laughs> Yeah, I th- I think we talked about this before though. Like uh, anything, anything I didn't I don't see anything helping or bringing the parties together short of an alien invasion. Like two parties that can't agree on a budget actually agrees on an app. <laughs> so... They can't they can't agree on shit. They can't even agree on what a what a woman is. Right. So can agree on anything, and they, it's not that they can't. They refuse to. Nobody wants to give that inch on the, uh, you know, on their little, their little battlefield that they fight on every day. So thank you, China, for bringing people together. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you, China. You might, you might actually save uh, um, Western democracy. Like you did say a couple of episodes ago, that the world needs a new entity to actually fight against. Yeah. Yeah, so we need something that's going to bring us together. And I mean, and again, I want to reiterate this over and over and over. When I say the Chinese, I don't mean the people. I mean Xi Jinping and his group. Like, they're the problem. It, it, it's the culture that they want to propagate. Uh, I think that's the main concern of people. Right. Like, and the entire aspect of communism has been poisoned over the past couple of decades now. That's the reason that we have Vietnam, mm. right? So right. I guess it's understand an understandable reaction for anyone in the U.S. when it comes to the history regarding Chinese policies actually invading other countries. Like mm. even my country is not actually a stranger to it, even though we have relationships and ties with China over the better part of a century now. Right. You kind of have so, to, though, like, right? Because though, your the proximity requires yeah. it almost. We have to live together. Yeah. And in terms of intent, like if the U.S. D- does feel that this is going to be infringing on their security, by all means, ban it. But for my end, there could have been some compromises regarding mm-hmm. this. And, and it's weird that they want DEF CON on this all of a sudden yeah. and completely eradicated it. Well, it's an election year too, so yeah, you know they make a lot of noise. Um, I think it's a good thing to, even even if it doesn't go through, like if it doesn't come to fruition, like a full on like you're if you're in the United States, you cannot get on TikTok. Um, I think this strong stance is a good showing. Two parties yeah. having the same yeah. decision in an election yeah. year where it's going to be completely very divisive. So, yeah, anyway. especially if, especially if, uh, Let's... if Donald J wins, shit's going to go fucking oh, he's crazy. If they, 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 if they, if they, if they can't, if they can't <laughs> put him in jail, he will. They're trying to put him in jail. They're trying everything they can to put him in jail, which is an entirely different discussion, but. It's, it's insanity what's happening yeah if the traject- trajectory of things actually continue he's gonna win Re- regardless like you're dealing with people here with short term memories mm. anyway hopefully our audience actually remembers to comment like subscribe and share all that jazz 
thank you again for joining us in this episode of Tech Times Daily. Uh, on behalf of my co-host, great Christopher Short, uh, my name is Christian Tejadas, and we'll see you in the next.